Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the key things I've learned from the Warhammer Plus Battle Report for Kill Team. So this video was an idea from John Boudon. I hope I've said that right. I probably haven't pronounced it correctly, John, sorry. But thanks for the idea. And if you guys have got any ideas for videos you'd like to see on the channel, then let me know. I make videos every day, so always up for new ideas and new content to put out if you're interested. This video is a little bit different from the usual videos I do. I'm in this one, and also I can't take any screenshots or record the screen from the Warhammer Plus battle report. So what I'll do is I'll just reenact some of it using the Octarius box set miniatures that I've got and um, we'll play it out on the tabletop just so you can see some of the things that went down in the battle report on Warhammer Plus. One thing I liked about the video is they didn't go with 10 different operatives for each kill team. So the Orc Commandos kill team had three Orc Commander boys in it and the Death Corps of Krieg had three of the regular troopers in it. So I think that made it a lot easier. There wasn't so many rules, abilities, unique actions to consider for all the different ones, but we still got a really good taste of all the different operatives that are available. We got some of them there selected and saw those abilities in action. Some were pretty brutal too. We got to see the strategic ploys playing a huge part in the battle report all the way through. And the skulk about one for the Orc Commandos was really good. That was like really powerful and it was used a lot through the whole battle. So I think this really emphasised just how important those strategic ploys can be and um, how they can affect the direction that the battle can go in. Another thing I noticed from the battle report was that they just called the different shapes by the colour. So they just said white or one red and I've been calling it one white circle one red pentagon and um, it's a real mouthful to get through it all so I think from now on I'm just going to refer to it like they did in the battle report and just call the different measurements by the colour rather than the colour and the shape. The bomb squig really stood out to me and I can't wait to include him in my next battle that I'm going to be playing with the Orc Commandos and he had a great activation um, he exploded and then he's incapacitated after that but he inflicted 42 points of damage in that one activation, which is crazy. And that was against, I think it was three of the troopers. So he really got stuck in and did some serious damage. And having the special rule of AP1 and then the critical hit special rule of P1 means he can actually get up to AP2. So armor penetration two, which really did some serious effects. So if you're getting critical hits on that, and um, you're exploding your bomb squig, you're gonna do some serious damage. And in that battle report, it was 42 points in that one activation. It was also great to see the get it done ability for the Orc Knob shown being played out on the battlefield. So that was really cool. And I got it slightly wrong when I was talking about it in the Fighter and Focus video I did for the Orc Knob. But thanks to Vex Badger who pointed out how that rule should work. Okay, so I'll just read out the rule. So this is the ability get it done for the Commander Knob. And it tells us that each time this operative is activated, you can select one friendly commando operative within one red of and visible to it. So it's got to be within six inches of the orc knob and visible to him as well. And then you can add one to the selected operatives APL. So where I went wrong is I thought the selected operative kept that extra one point for the AP and then moved it into the next round and chose to use it then. But it wasn't a choice. He'd already activated in the round he was given that extra one to his APL. And so the next time he was activated, he was then able to use it. So that's where I went a little bit wrong on that one. But it was really interesting to see that if your operative has been activated in a turning point, you can still give them the extra one to add to their APL, and then they can use it in the next turning point when they are next activated. So I think that's the crucial thing. So it's when they're next activated, whether it's in the turning point they're given that one to their APL or the next turning point. I made another mistake in that um, Orc Knob video as well. For some reason, when I was talking about the Power Claw and defending or fighting against it, I started talking about defending as if it was a shooting action. I don't know why, um, but I got that completely wrong. So if you watch that, I'm sorry about that. Um, just ignore that bit, but I'll pin the comment from Vex Badger so you can see the corrections that he put in the text there. Oh, I should also note about Get It Done that the Orc Knob gave it to himself in that battle report. So it doesn't have to be another fire, it can be 
himself as well. So that was interesting to see that being done because I didn't know that you could do that. So that was really good. So another thing I noticed from the battle report was that the turning points can be quite long, especially having like 10 operatives each. It really is taking a long time to go through it. And each with the different unique actions, abilities, different things, it's really gonna take a lot, I think, to learn your own kill team. But then as you're going through it, if you're having to check the book, especially if you're new to it and you're still learning like I am how to play it properly, then you're gonna be going back and forward to the book quite a lot. So I think the turning points are gonna be quite long. And I think I'm almost tempted to start playing with some Space Marines to get some like smaller kill teams together of just five models. And I think having just five operatives could be a lot easier to start learning the rules rather than going and focusing on either the Orc Commandos or the Death Corps Krieg. And they're really awesome. But I think at the moment I'm trying to learn both kill teams so I can play them both at the same time. But I'm really thinking I'm going to look at maybe some Incursors and you only got five operatives in a kill team then you've got one sergeant and four regular ones and then they don't come with so many different special rules and unique abilities and actions and things like that together as well so i think that could be a good way to go um but yeah with 10 operatives on each side the turning points were quite long but i like how they did the battle report because it kind of made it clear exactly what they were doing and i really got to see it being played out it almost slow time so it was good to see each thing they talked about why they were doing certain things some little bits were a bit rushed especially with the dice i would have liked to have seen on some of the um fights between the two sides i would have liked to have seen a bit more focus on the dice so we could just see that so they're going quite quick in stages there um but otherwise really good and i really enjoyed it I also noticed that whenever the operatives were bunching up, they were really getting punished for it, especially from that bomb squig and the flamer and things like that. So really important, I think, not to bunch up too much. And also Overwatch played a huge part in it. That was really good. I think there was some times where they ended a move action almost out in the open, and then Overwatch was able to put a serious amount of damage on the, the uh, fighter. And it was an orc uh, knob, I think, that took some damage from Overwatch by ending his move action you know, quite exposed. So really take advantage of that cover, get close to the buildings, don't end your turn out in the open and really look where the enemy operatives are so that that overwatch doesn't become a thing and you don't get stung by it. Injuries seem to play a big part in the game too. And as the operatives were getting injured, that was limiting how much they could move. They were losing one wipe from their movement and they were also losing some of the attacks they could make as well. So when they're injured, that was a big part. But that's where I think having the Death Corps Krieg would be good because you can bring that medic in and like take them out of the injury status. And I think that's really cool. But what I saw a really good tactic that they used was they put the medic with the plasma for the Death Corps Krieg. And those two together really were a good duo. And that plasma was able to do a lot of damage. He was going up, down, he's um, taking wounds all the time, got set on fire. But that medic was bringing him back and allowed him to keep punishing the orcs and especially as they were coming around the corner of one piece of terrain he just could keep hitting them so i think putting your medic in with one of your most powerful operatives there is a really good tactic and back to strategic ploy skulk about just kept coming up for the orc commandos all the way through and it was really really helpful but in the last turning point the death core krieg did an overcharge of all the las guns so any of the death core of krieg troopers who had the las gun could be overcharged and so i think that was a good way to go out in the end um, and so that was a really strong um, strategic ploy that they could use there as well so the strategic ploys were playing a really big part in the game for sure but skulk about every turning point it seemed was getting included i'll just read out the strategic ploy for skulk about just so you know exactly what it entails and so it tells us that until the end of the turning point each time a shooting attack is made against a friendly commando operative before rolling defense dice for that shooting attack if it has a conceal order you can retain one as a successful normal save without rolling it so that's a really great strategic ploy and also don't forget that you can use two regular saves to cancel out one critical so i think that was really good as well and they pointed that out in the battle report as well almost forgot actually they did and so it was good to see them remembering that and then making the use of skulk about to remember it so that's pretty much everything i took from the battle report really seeing those orcs not acting like orcs really going for the objectives 
the objective uh, nature of the game really forces you to do that. And I think the way that the Orcs are set up, um, it just feels natural to do it anyway. But what I've learned from the, you know, going through all the rules and playing a few games so far with the Death Corps of Krieg and the Orcs is just to really learn the kill team, learn what those operatives can do. And I think something I'm going to take from this bat report is don't be tempted to put all the different like fancy operatives in there with all those different abilities and unique actions because I think it can sometimes be a bit overwhelming if you're just starting to play it and you've got 10 operatives and you're trying to figure out and remember what each one does. I think if you want to have like a faster game and really focus and immerse yourself in the narrative and the action, then maybe having fewer operatives in your kill team is going to be a good thing. And I think that's um, something I'm going to start working on now when I look at using some of the space marines I've got. I've got to get them painted though. You can see some of them behind me. I've got to get them painted up, um, but certainly I can play with them now and practice before I do that. I'd love to hear what you think about the battle report that was featured on Warhammer Plus if you watched it. And if you didn't get to see it or haven't subscribed, then hopefully this has given you an idea of what it was all about and helped you out in some way just to pick out some of the key things that I learned from it as a noob to kill team. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions, then just add them in the comment section below. And if I've got, if I've got anything wrong, then please let me know about that too. That would be great and then I can correct it as we go and pin the comment so that everyone can see and make sure they don't make the same mistakes I have. But again, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.